Is this the smartest new battery storage system to hit the UK market? About nine months ago, we visited Anchor Solix at Intersolar in Munich, and I said this. So is this the perfect battery storage system? Well, we won't know for sure until we install one in the real world. So we're here today to answer that question once and for all. We're gonna show you the full installation and give you our brutally honest opinion on the Anchor Solix X1. So here at this property, we're installing the Anchor Solix X1 as a hybrid system. That means we're connecting solar panels directly into it. We've got 10 445 watt all black bifacial solar panels on a nearly south facing roof. And we're connecting those into the six kilowatt Anchor Solix inverter with 15 kilowatt hours of battery storage. This is the wall the customer would like the batteries installed on. We come yesterday and sort of spoke to him just so we can get a a plan now heads. What room's just done, he had some couple of switches and that, so we've just moved them right into the corner, just so we've got a bit more room to work with. So, yeah, we've just got this hardy backer, which we use on most jobs, just to give us a nice flat surface. So yeah, we're just gonna mount these first, prep the area, and then start installing the batteries. This is actually the first time we've installed one of these anchor systems but they do come with this nice clear insulation guide so we're going to see how clear it is actually and follow it step by step so yeah hopefully it should be enjoyable but we'll soon find out now one thing that's a big thumbs up for this system is how easy it is to install each battery comes in a module of five kilowatt hours which means it's reasonably easy to pick up not too heavy that it breaks your back another thing they've provided in the installation kit is this template you just lay it out and you have three marking holes and like it says you you mark all the bracket holes before actually installing the batteries one thing I will say you never get a floor that's basically perfect, perfectly level, especially in like new build garages. So we have had to put shims underneath to level it out and we've had to do that because there's no way of adjusting the height. So if it's, if it's not perfectly level, you do have to shim it. And it'd just be nice to see sort of adjustable feet on them, even if it's trimming five or 10 mil, it just helps you out a little bit extra. Oh, go on. Now with any battery storage system that we install, we try to choose modular systems where possible because it does make installation so much easier. You might have seen in a recent video that we installed a Tesla Powerwall 3 and they weigh 130 kilos, which is just super awkward to try and lift into place. From an installer point of view, it's not an easy product to fit, whereas this is super easy. These battery modules weigh about 50 kilos each, so easily stackable safely with two people it just looks so smart and it goes in so seamlessly the power module which is basically the inverter the bit that goes on the top here is also really easy to install it just stacks on top and the cabling is all nice and neat down the sides you've got these cable management trays which means that everything just plugs in easily and it's very quick to install. Batteries all mounted. Um, Ruben's done the cable in this side linking all the batteries. Just got the board mounted. Um, it's gonna feed this. So yes, yeah, just now we're just gonna put the isolators on the wall, get some cables dressed in the AC cable for this then get a DC over for the PV. Oh, so that's so weird and DC over to the PV. <laughs> Just quickly, I was looking at our YouTube analytics and I was shocked to find out that 73.4% of people who watch our YouTube videos haven't subscribed yet. So if there's one thing that you want to do to support our channel off the back of this video, I'd really love it if you subscribe. Hopefully the videos provide enough value to make it worth you just clicking that subscribe button. Thank you. This product has clearly been designed with safety in mind as well. A lot of battery storage systems have battery DC connectors that are kind of exposed and things like that. With this product, all of the connections are securely covered. The cable management side of things is done really nicely. So for example, the DC connections on this side are covered. You can't access them. No prying hands can try and pull out the cables, which makes it a lot safer. And it's the same on the other side with the AC. I can see ya. No, it needs to go sort of flat. It's trying to bend up as it's going in. That's it, keep going. Keep going. Gotcha. That was easy. 
Now this is the first system I've seen where it enables you to manually control your heat pump through your battery storage system app. The Anchor app via the SG Ready function gives you an option for manual control as well and you can literally turn the heat pump on and off via your app for the Anchor Solix system. You can also set it up on a kind of a smart schedule if you want, depending on when you want your heat pump to come on and off, or the auto function, which just enables you to automatically ramp up your heat pump when you've got excess solar being sent out to the grid. Now, one of my favorite things about this product is this intuitive display that you've got here. It's such a nice feature because you can see straight away at a glance how much solar you're generating, how much your state of charge is on your batteries and how much the home is using. And it just turns on nicely as you walk up to it. So it's not on all the time, but when you walk up, it illuminates and gives you an instantaneous overview of your system without even having to get the app out. Now another cool feature of this system which is quite unique is its anti-corrosion rating. Essentially what it means is it's been extreme tested with all sorts of salt water blasting and it has a very high anti-corrosion rating. It's made of galvanized stainless steel with a specialized powder coating. It's IP66 rated too with a 10 year warranty and basically it means that you can install it close to the shoreline which a lot of battery systems won't allow you to do. Now the manufacturer's instructions do say that you shouldn't install it closer than 300 meters to the sea, but I did see a YouTube video of someone putting it right next to the sea recently. So uh, it is possible, but not recommended. Another unique thing about this system is it has a very low startup voltage. So with this particular system, we've got 4.45 kilowatts uh, peak of solar with the six kilowatt inverter. So we've actually oversized the inverter a bit compared to the solar array. But in theory, you can connect up to 12 kilowatt peak of panels to this six kilowatt inverter because you can do up to two times oversizing on the inverter, which means that you can connect a decent amount of solar panels to a relatively small inverter and enable yourself to generate that six kilowatts even in low light conditions. Now in this particular installation, you'll notice we've just put panels on the garage, but there is a nice roof on the main house too. And this system is future proof so that if we wanted to, we could add more panels on the house later. The Anchor Solix X1 has two MPPTs you can put one string into each MPPT, which means that we could add another 10, 12, maybe even 14 panels onto this existing inverter without any changes other than panels on the roof and, and new DC cables down. You can have up to 16 amps per MPPT as well. So it's really powerful and enables you to future-proof the system. While Ruben's nearly finished doing the meter side, I'm just gonna get the cert ready and do the testing. It's only a couple of circuits, so it shouldn't actually take that long. Um, and that's just because the weather is quite miserable at the moment. So we've just got to run, to run the ethernet cable back to the house. But while it's raining, I'm just gonna do it and quickly do the cert. All right, so that's all back on now. It wasn't as bad as I thought, to be honest. I suppose once you rip it all out and start, that's when you know for sure, but at least it's all done. And yeah, now we can just focus on the other bits. Now, you might have noticed that this is a fairly small battery storage system compared to what we usually fit at Artisan Electrics. We often fit 30, 40 plus kilowatt hours of storage. But actually, that is possible with the Anchor Solix X1. With just one power module like this, you can fit up to 30 kilowatt hours of battery modules. So you could do another stack of three batteries next to this. And then if you need more than 30 kilowatt hours, you can actually connect multiple power modules in parallel, up to six power modules for a whacking 36 kilowatt of charge and discharge and up to 180 kilowatt hours of battery storage. I 
Okay, we've now connected up the PV, uh, we've done the testing, getting all good readings, which is great. The next thing we need to do now is run the ethernet and I'll show you the route of it. Most batteries can actually connect through Wi-Fi or via Wi-Fi, but we always like to run a hardwired ethernet connection just in case the router, the signal's not strong enough or the Wi-Fi drops out, at least you've got that backup. This is where it should exit. And hopefully there won't be a brick pop. Yeah, he's put it, he took the hammer off. Beautiful. Because the router is actually pretty much in the center of the house, it's underneath the stairs, which is quite common on new builds. We're gonna have to run it all the way around the outside because he's got a few ethernet ports throughout the house. We're gonna actually take one off the front room. Under these rubber plastic door linings, which is quite nice because they're basically a little tunnel. So it's easy for us. And then we'll just bury it underneath this surface. We'll just come around the back of the house here and then we'll just poke through, drill a nice little hole and then plug it into the patch lead there. Each of these battery modules is five kilowatt hours in terms of its storage capacity. And each module has a three kilowatt charge and discharge rate. But depending on the size of your power module and how many batteries you have, the charge rate can vary. Which essentially means these 15 kilowatt hours of storage can fully discharge or fully charge in about an hour and a half. Now the reason you want to pay attention to the charge and discharge rate of any battery storage system is because in winter when there's not enough solar you want to be able to charge your batteries up on cheap overnight rate electricity and often you only have a three or four hour window of cheap electricity where you need to be able to fill the batteries up full. So the sizing of the battery system by means of its charge and discharge rate as well as the total capacity will give you that limit of how fast you can charge your batteries within that window to make sure that you make the best use of that cheap rate energy. And with this system, like I say, it'll charge up within an hour and a half, so it's perfectly possible to fill these up on the cheap rate overnight during winter and still save the customer money on their energy bills. Now this system can be used as a fully off-grid system, but in off-grid situations, you need to be able to cope with sudden spikes in load and the system to not shut down. This can cope with up to 20 kVA of inductive load. So imagine you've got a quick spike, maybe a motor switches on or something like that. You spike up to 20 kVA of load. It will cope with that for up to 10 seconds and essentially enable you to output and cover that inductive load for that short burst when it's needed. So this setup can be used completely off-grid, which is useful for people if they're in the back of beyond, maybe in a, a log cabin somewhere in the woods, this system could work for that situation. Now with any battery storage system, if you've watched our videos before, you'll know that commissioning can be a bit of a headache. Some systems are an absolute nightmare to commission, and others are fairly simple. And I've got to say the Anker system is on the more simple end when it comes to commissioning. It's all done through the Anker Solix app. You scan the code on the side of the inverter to log in and connect to the inverter essentially. And then you just go through the system step by step. You add the battery modules, you pair it with the customer and you add in all of the settings that you need for the customer's particular situation. You can do your firmware updates as well, all in the app, and they don't take too long either, which you'll be happy to know. So overall, it's a nice smooth commissioning process. Now I've got to be honest, a lot of the features that we've spoken about so far are interesting, but they're all fairly subtle. But the thing that strikes me the most about the Anker Solix X1 is actually just the way it looks. I think in terms of the battery systems that are on the market today, it is, probably the best looking battery system on the market. It's so slick, such a nice minimalist look to it. And with this amazing sort of heads up display on the front and the fact that it's so thin at only 150 mil, it's just such a sleek and beautiful looking product. And it enables you to put it in pride of place in your garage or on the outside of your house, knowing that you're not gonna have some ugly hideous battery on the side of your property is always a bonus. Now, of course, no system is perfect and there's always things that could be improved. And I think this is one of them with the anchor system is this use of this meter here. The meter that basically reads the house consumption, the import and export, etc., has to go here in the meter box and interrupt the main tails to the property. 
and then you have to run a data cable from there to the Anchor Solix system. It's just a little bit faffy and complicated to install. Also, it doesn't come with an enclosure, so you need a special two module enclosure to fit it into. A lot of systems that we use have got a separate meter that you can install and just connect a CT clamp to. So that's something I'd like to see them implement into this system, which I'm sure they will, um, because it just makes it a little bit more faffy to install when it comes to the actual meter side of things. So we've installed this on its own 32 amp bi-directional RCBO, that's important because the RCBO has to be able to take power through it both ways essentially and still function safely. So always check that you're installing bi-directional RCBOs if you're fitting RCBOs for uh, battery storage systems or solar PV systems. So that's it, our first ever Anchor install done and dusted. What do you think of the Anchor Solix X1? Well, if you'd like to become an installer of this product, I'll leave a link below where you can find out how to apply to become an approved Anchor installer. But either way, thanks to Anchor for sponsoring today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, why not settle back and watch one of these two, which YouTube thinks you'll enjoy.